Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence. I'm Francis McCarthy, and the painting I'm bringing you today, I think it has a better title, but <laughs> I'm just calling it Clouds. I recently photographed it too. I should really look where that is. I will. I'll find it. Actually, I'll pop it in my store too. There, there's. I just felt like doing a little quick video. I've just uh, recently instituted a, a blog. I've done lots of blogging in the past, but I, I basically kind of gave up on it for the last year and a half or two because uh, the the YouTube videos took over and it felt um, a little redundant. But uh, mostly because my blog was so just exclusively art focused. But anyway, uh, let's get into some tips and things because I know you're in a hurry. Uh, first of all, you notice how I'm doing these big shapes. I'm going to do these clouds. You saw the image at the beginning uh, of the, you know, the thumbnail. Uh, notice that um, I got a big paper towel out and started working with that. Never hesitate to do that when you're doing block-ins under, under paintings. Heck, some artists paint with paper towels all the way through. I don't recommend it. Actually, might be better with like acrylics. Uh, come to think of it, when I was doing acrylics, I uh, had a job doing, a, you know, um, well, we did mostly framing, but we also did artwork for the hospitality industry. I would do these sort of abstracted landscapes, and I would use a two-inch house painting brush <laughs> with acrylic paint. So those were fun, uh, some of, you know, the early uh, painting I did. Anyway, never, you know, you want to keep things loose, keep things fun. Um, so just sitting there and uh, actually so what we're looking at uh, was me recording a lesson with my student and this went out to uh, some of my supporters on uh, uh, via email and it's now the live version of course available to members of the channel but I thought it'd be cool to uh, share the uh, little quick version of it um, she had wanted to learn how to paint clouds and um, I have to say she's still she's still working on that uh, to me it seems pretty easy <laughs> but I've been painting clouds for a long long time and I have a lot of ideas about it that I've internalized um, my, my best advice when it comes to painting clouds is use the reference as inspiration but as soon as you start getting paint on your board or your canvas that's really where it's at You're, you really want to focus on making that look good and the thing is with clouds is that you want to keep everything quite loose okay um, you don't want to be too tight because when you start painting tight clouds you're painting bad clouds okay I'm just making it making it simple for you anyway there's a, there's a couple tips out of the way and uh, let's talk some more about my blog because I'm really excited about it um, uh, like I was saying, I had I've had lots of blogs. They were all art focused for the last 11 million years. Um, my very first one, though, if you go to my website and look at my oldest blog, I talk about my um, the history uh, uh, doing drawings, illustration, and I give the entire history of my graphics career um, with names uh, and changed. <laughs> because I'm spilling some dirt you know you'd have to dig for that and uh, the funny thing is is like I, I don't even remember exactly what I said at this point I'm not that kind of I don't know I'm very uh, present and future focused as a person yeah uh, which is one of the reasons why I think having this blog is going to be great I'm, I'm going to put something on there every single day so that's mfrancismccarthy.com you got music I'm going to be folding out illustrations I've been doing some memes yeah my idea of memes anyway you know which is a unique take on them I think <clears throat> I love memes but uh, uh, you know I'll paste a meme on my wife's uh, timeline in Facebook or whatever but for my part uh, if I'm going to put a meme on my channel uh, or my blog or my Facebook feed it's going to be a meme I created you know words I like to grab a, a good quote I did one today about abstract art. I'm really going to change it to modern art though because some abstract art is good but a lot of modern art is not. But I won't go off on a tangent about that. 
you dig around on this channel somewhere in the six or seven hundred videos there um, you'll find it yeah so another thing I'm thinking of doing is some of the stuff that's live not available uh, doing a little 15 minute ones to give me um, a chance to uh, have a quick version up and um, also to uh, have things that I can um, pop on my blog because uh, so, um, oh and of course I can always digging go digging for all kinds of videos that, that I, I stopped putting on my old blog yeah so once you got the drawing then you know how I, I, I operate I have a tinted board here this was MDF and um, uh, actually, I don't even know if it was tinted. I think it's tinted with a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. But um, you can see how I work. I'm pretty methodical, you know. Oh, what I like to do is either, like I didn't do it in this one, but a lot of times, so whatever is the color of the sky, I might put that in first. And then from there, I like to usually put the darkest bits of the sky in next. And then the medium tones, working my way up to the lightest tones. And a lot of times what I end up doing is going in and knocking back the um, the darkest tones in the sky. Because there's another tip for you, and I've mentioned this in the channel many times, but I know I'm getting new subscribers all the time, so I don't mind repeating myself, uh, especially when it's an important information. And that is... Um, your your darkest colors in the sky uh, you don't want them too dark otherwise they look like holes in the sky okay this is a bad bad thing and um, I almost always it's not that I necessarily start wrong but yeah I'm sure gar guarantee you if you watch this painting you look at that dark patch of clouds it's up in our upper left hand side you watch me knock that back, but it's it's much harder to judge these values when um, you don't have other values down. It's just a board color, but I still like to start with a dark, and then usually modify it a little bit. I invariably will. Um, the land on this was pretty interesting. Just kind of nothing. Um, I had grabbed this reference, uh, you know, very quickly. Uh, it's some random internet reference, and um, uh, just so I would have something to paint with the student. She had sent me some cloud photos that she thought would be good to paint. I couldn't find them. I didn't really love them anyway. That's the other thing. Here's some good advice too. Um, you wanna don't don't if you have a reference image you took of a landscape, invariably the clouds in that landscape are not going to be great. And I highly recommend either you know if you're not computer um, savvy and don't know how to swap out uh, the clouds in your photo and if you do um, then definitely do that and it doesn't matter if it looks a little rough because the point isn't to have a beautiful um, photo the point is to have some reference that you can paint um, but if you can't do that just have the two references up taped of wherever it is you like to keep your reference while you're painting I always like to have my reference off to my right um, that's been consistent for a long time I don't really know why that is but um, it is that way and now I'm just stuck with that yeah um, the other thing I would say and I say it's about painting every part of the landscape is you want to be methodical you know um, you want to you want to uh, you want to keep moving but don't be rushed you know don't don't belabor any part of it because when you start getting tweaky when you start delineating you start saying oh well, I gotta get every single branch or every single cloud as a matter of fact I mean if I were to paint this reference you wouldn't even be able to recognize it from the photo because I just use the photo as inspiration. I use the same, I've been using a lot of the same cloud photos as inspiration for 10 years now. I, it doesn't matter because every time I would paint it differently anyway, it's just something to stimulate um, and, and get something going. And that's really the idea behind painting reference altogether. You want to have um, something that's really stimulating. Now, now be careful when you. Um, when you do paint someone else's photograph because uh, let's say you get rich and famous uh, you could have real problems especially say if you're 
trying to market it as a print or something like that and in this age of social media trust me uh, um, in fact uh, the, the pre video previous to this you'll see I did a, um, a photo that was put up for a challenge on the uh, tonalism um, group on Facebook I assumed everything was cool because uh, you know and I did find out it was cool because the photographer just um, today I uh, posted a comment saying hey awesome you painted my my photo I really dig it and appreciate it and that's great <laughs> but you know that's what you want but a lot of time and he had given permission for his photo to be used um, for the purposes of the challenge but if a photographer does a really excellent picture of some sunset or clouds um, they're going to be a bit proprietary about that um, if it's yeah, they have a right to be, so either get permission, make sure you're really changing things. The best thing and the thing I like to do is to take my own um, reference photography and to be honest, if you're painting, if you're painting right, you're painting the good way. Um, I, I have successfully made the spindliest looking trees look majestic in a painting, you know. <clears throat> it's like magic. But you gotta have the right attitude, you know, and um, <clears throat> that attitude is one of I'm not just copying uh, the photo. I'm making a beautiful painting, and this is my this this reference image is, is stimulating my imagination. It's it's helping me to create something that um, I wouldn't have been able to just come up out of my head, and. Uh, I, I'm really big on, you know, like a lot, a lot, a lot of the times I advise uh, artists that are starting out, you know, when you're finishing your painting, did you have that reference put away? It's definitely time, because what will happen is you, in the process of trying, you're struggling because you don't have much experience, right? And you don't necessarily know what to leave in and what to take out, but in one sense, if you're an artist, you're artistically inclined, you do, but you can get real mixed up with that photo I've done it time and time and time again so when I talk about this phenomenon I know what I'm talking about and I just recently mentioned in a previous video it was uh, Stern was his name um, uh, his first name will still come to me um, it's an interesting name he has but um, Stapleton Kearns thank you yeah go to his blog by the way if you're interested in learning about painting that what an amazing resource that is. He puts, he spent like two years writing everything he knew about painting, and, and I have to say I've done kind of the same thing here on my channel, you know. But um, he, you know, he's got 20, 30 years on me, and uh, not that I absolutely love everything he does either. Um, but he's a very good painter. I won't, I won't say he isn't. Uh, anyway, hey, you can see how I'm working up to the bright bits, right? And that's the payoff, that's the pow, that's the pop, you know. And I've been kind of wanting to, and I will be, I'm going to be getting this up in my store. I will adjust this photo tomorrow. Because it's a beautiful painting. I'm really proud of it. Pardon me. Um, just had a cookie. <clears throat> Sorry. It's also, it's evening here. Um, September 16th. Uh, tomorrow is my uh, dear departed mother's birthday, so happy birthday, Mom. I dedicate this video to you. And uh, we're getting pretty close to the end here, so thank you so much for joining me today. Please like and comment. Um, and uh, you know what? You wouldn't regret, um, if you're into this, um, this painting content here, you wouldn't regret joining the members part of the channel. Um, because worst of all you have pretty extensive access to me if you have questions um, also you have access to over 80 of the live videos some of which were publicly available until very recently um, but now it's just members only and it's worth it so anyway till I get back with another video please do me a favor take good care stay out of trouble and appreciate you watching Hey, did you know that this channel has memberships? What's included in the memberships? 
uh, a bunch of live videos and I mean 80 videos hundreds of hours and uh, all you've got to do is click on the little join link down below and there you go.